Hi, I'm Jeanal Shah and I'm Joe Elfgroth from Pivotal Platform Engineering team. We are going to talk about how you could bring services onto PKS without writing extra code. We Bosch, so you don't have to. So this is what our agenda looks like. Uh, talk about who we are, why Kibosh, then do a demo, build a tile under one minute. Um, that's an optimist goal, but we'll try. And then talk about Bazaar, what Bazaar is, and then demo some Bazaar. And then we'll have some time for Q&A. So for those who don't know us, we are team at Pivotal, uh, platform engineering team uh, who helps partner integrate their products into PCF. We are people behind 80-some tiles that you could find on Pivotal Network. Uh, and the reason why this is important is because many of our customer application is dependent on third-party software. And if we don't provide the services, that means they cannot replant their um, they, they cannot re-platform their applications. Services Marketplace is an integral part of a uh, platform. It provides both Pivotal and third-party software, and the services are integrated with, uh, via Open Source Broker API. So uh, let's quickly take a look about what this Open Source Broker API is, OSPAPI. Uh, abbreviation, um, but essentially, service broker that is compliant with OS BAPI API allows you to create a new service instance that can then uh, deploy the service instances and deliver all the necessary information that, to your application that it needs to connect to. And then application then talk to the services and doesn't matter where your services are running. It could be running on PAS, which is Pivotal Application Service, or on PKS. The broker API has five endpoints that it needs to implement. Uh, the first endpoint is a catalog in endpoint. What it describes is essentially the plans that your services are going to provide create instance or a provision endpoint describes how the services, or it creates a services instance. And then the bind application call can deliver the information such as URL credentials that it needs to talk to so that application can then talk to. And then unbind and unprovision call. So this is important piece of my presentation that we are going to talk about. So rewind nine months back before PKS came in. For any service vendor who wants to integrate their product with PCF, we would ask them to do quite a bit. Wrap their product into a TAL. A TAL is a special format, dot .pivotal format, that distributes a product through Pivotal Network. Have them make write a service broker. A service broker implements a five API endpoint, or sometimes implement on-demand broker so that the service instances are created on demand. So write a service adapter for it. Wrap everything into a Bosch release so Bosch knows how to deploy the services, and then make sure that it runs on all supported stem cell. And then rewrite logic for install upgrade, HA, backup for their services. That's quite a bit. We are asking our partners to do uh, that is very Cloud Foundry specific, and not saying that it's wrong, but it comes with a lot of hurdles. It's complicated, it's expensive, and for most partners, the return on investment is quite low. That is because they are not seeing that benefit that they see, for example, working on some other platforms such as Windows. Most of our tiles are just a service broker. Very few implements on-demand, and we have significant gap in our portfolio. Then came PKS. 
And then we ask question, what if? What if instead of asking our partners to do all this, we take their Kubernetes distribution, which is either a Helm chart or deployment manifest as is, put a generic service broker in front of it, and instead of them writing, we write a service broker for them, which is generic enough that it can then deploy any Kubernetes distribution, wrap everything in a tile that can deploy Kubernetes services on PKS cluster on demand. And that would then benefit both us and partners. For partners, they are not writing CF-specific code so that it's better quality because they are continuously uh, improving and they are already doing that. The assumption is they are already investing in Kubernetes and it's exciting for their developers because we are not making them learn about CF-specific things, which is Bosch and Tal. And for us, it's much larger marketplace and uh, better quality of services for our customers and we can rapidly grow our marketplace in much faster pace. And that's the project we call Kibosh, Kubernetes instead of Bosch. It's a generic broker that implements five endpoints, OS BAPI endpoints. It's 100% open source, and we were able to deliver minimum viable product, also support for Kubernetes operators, Many of our data partners are requesting support for Kubernetes operators so that they have better control on their services and um, Kubernetes operators allow them to take a control and maintain the life cycle of their services. So we have support for that. And then we are continuing to improve and adding more features that our partners are requesting, such as service access, so provide better service access instead of, uh, instead of public load balancer, or better, create a service. When you create a service, create a dedicated cluster for their services. For example, PFS or Knative, uh, and allow some partners to also provide cluster level configuration. For example, Kafka requires persistent disk volume changes, so allow them those service partners to have that control for PKS cluster. So let's take a look how this all works together. Uh, Helm, Helm is a center of Kibosh. It's a Kubernetes deployment uh, package deployment. It allows you to define, install, and update your services in Kubernetes. And um, it is at the center of Kibosh. The reason why we chose Helm is because it seems like a standard, uh, de facto standard in the industry. There is a lot of support behind it. For example, like, uh, and if there is any uh, other standard that comes in, we might just go adapt to it. Will it be heartbroken? Probably not. It also seems like it's a common denominator between standard Kubernetes manifest that can also be deployed via Helm or Kubernetes operators that allow you to define custom resource that also can be deployed via Helm. So, and that's the reason why we decided to go with Helm. This is what Kibosh architecture looks like. A lot of boxes, a lot of arrows, and complicated, quite complicated. What I want to talk about on this picture is when Kibosh, along with Helm package uh, and the Docker images, is deployed, uh, is packaged in a tile and deployed via Ops Manager, Bosch creates a VM, puts a Kibosh binary on that VM along with Docker images, along with the Helm charts, and then push image Aaron pushes the images to a private registry. The private registry here could be anything. It could be Harbor, it could be a Docker private registry, or it could be anything that you bring. 
The reason why um, the Docker images are pushed into private registry is for two reasons. One is we want predictable deployment um, and also want so that the solution can work in an air-gapped environment. So when Bosch is crea a Bosch creates this VM, Kibosh binary is put in along with the pieces. Kibosh also creates a tiller. A tiller is a backend that Helm talks to to deploy services onto PKS cluster. So when create service calls comes in from CAPI, CF create service, it talks to Kibosh. And Kibosh then talks to Tiller and create a service instance on demand on PKS cluster. For most of you, you don't have to worry about it. We Bosch, so you don't have to. It could be treated as a black box for most of you. If you are interested in going deep, we can talk about it during our question and answer. What is important is this. If you are a partner who already has Helm charts and Docker images, you bring that, we provide you with the tooling uh, that is Kibosh Broker, Tile Generator that our team wrote uh, that helps you build the tile that will allow you to package everything into a dot pivotal format that contains the tile contains all the Docker images, the Helm chart, and Kibosh, so that your tile can then be distributed to your customer through Pivotal Network. We are going to see a demo on how we can build this tile. Hi, Gino. I'm an independent software vendor. Yes. And, <laughs> and, I, and I have a SQL, MySQL distribution that and I would I'm, like to... Go ahead. And I'm going to act as a platform engineer. So, Joe, what do you want to do today? I would like to get my MySQL distribution into the Pivotal Cloud Foundry environment. What do I need to do? So I'm assuming you have your Helm chart for MySQL and Docker images. I do have a Helm chart. OK. So what we need to do is write a few lines of YAML to describe what MySQL is going to provide, like a plan a small, medium, how big your MySQL service is going to look like, and then you are good to go. Okay. You want to try? Yes, let's take a look at our Helm chart. So here we're looking at our Helm chart. A Helm chart consists of a few items here. One is the chart.yaml file. If we look in here, really, it's just a name and a version, a description. So that's pretty simple, standard Helm chart stuff. We also have a values YAML file. And in here, these are variables that get applied to your templates in the uh, Kubernetes manifest. So this is name value pairs, essentially. And inside this templates directory, there are Kubernetes deployment files. And those Kubernetes deployment files get populated with the values that are in values.yaml. So that's just uh, basic uh, Helm stuff. Then uh, what I learned at Partner Days was that we needed to add a few items here in order to make our Helm chart comply to OSBAPI, in other words, to give it plans. So here we have a couple of a plans directory and a couple of plans files. So let's take a look inside large.yaml. So here we're specifying uh, more variables that can overwrite what's in values.yaml with uh, memory sizes and so forth to be applied to the templates. Another thing that you need is to download your Docker image. Uh, we like to create uh, air-gapped uh, files mm -hmm. that contain the images, so we've downloaded that in there. And uh, so my Helm chart is now ready for tiling. What else do I need to do to it? 
And um, you have Child Generator tool downloaded on your laptop. I do. Okay, so all you need to do is run Tile Build command. So there's my Tile Build command. Okay, so what essentially is happening is uh, Tile Build command uh, takes Joe's MySQL Helm chart and Docker images, taking Kibosh broker, putting everything into a Bosch release, and generating a dot pivotal file. And you mentioned about partner days. So partner days is something that our team does. Uh, we do that around roughly around four times a year, where we get together with independent software vendors, partners, and work three days very rigorously, actively to deliver a tile. So if you are interested in learning about more, uh, I have information towards the end. Uh, but it's something that you might want to consider coming to. It's a free event um, where we work super closely with you to bring your services onto PCF. Okay, our tile build process finished. Notice that the last line is a dot .pivotal file. Go home. So that was quick. Yeah, so if you're familiar with uh, uh, PCF Ops Manager, this is where you would use your tile. I've already pre-imported that so we don't have to wait for the, the file upload process. So you would add your tile to Pivotal Ops Manager. And then just taking a quick peek at the configuration here, uh, you would point it at a Kubernetes cluster. So of course a Helm chart is a Kubernetes deployment. We need a cluster to run it on. Here you would give the credentials to that cluster. Also, you could configure it with a private registry. So if you have a registry inside your, inside your company that keeps your images, you would point it there so that um, Helm and Kubernetes, when it does the install, would fetch the images uh, from there. Another piece we might look at that you don't have to pay a whole lot of attention to, but remember on the architecture diagram, Gino was showing uh, the loader errand and the register errand. Um, the register in particular puts it into the Cloud Foundry marketplace. Here's where the errands show up. Cool. So that seemed quite painless. Yeah, that <laughs> seemed very easy compared to writing a service broker and creating a Bosch release and perhaps writing a service adapter and figuring out many more lines in Tile YAML to to deploy that as a tile. Cool. Anyone have any questions here? Yes? I'm having a hard time hearing. Sorry if you could speak a little louder. So if I, I'm trying to understand if you want a stem cell to build the Docker images so that you don't have to update? Yes. So th that is something that I think our Tal CI uh, can provide for sure to a CI can then take your images and then take the stem cell and build uh, images for you. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
so, so the question is, will the, the items in values.yaml be exposed in the tile? And they could be, yes. Um, so when, we, when the Kibosh does the deploy of that Helm chart, it applies uh, values YAML and it applies the plan values on top of it. And you could also modify your chart to add additional values that the operator could um, key in at the time of the tile and, uh, and override the, yeah. those values, yes. And uh, we also have a feature, uh, cluster configurations, that when you do create service call, you can pass in with dash C option for those values to be override. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so so the, que the, the question is whether we can point that tile at any Kubernetes uh, instance as opposed to a PKS instance, and the answer is yes. It's, it's just the standard stuff you find in kube, uh, kube con uh, config. So the answer to that is yes. Uh, but we also have, uh, sorry, sorry, the question is that if your tile wants to talk to multiple cluster, will it then have to deploy again and again? So the way in this setup, the answer to that question is yes. Uh, what you are seeing, although we have a feature where the cluster creation is then pushed at the create service level. So when the create service call comes in, it can either reuse an existing cluster or create a dedicated cluster so that your services can then deploy to. Any more questions? Okay. So what happens? Uh, so we didn't talk uh, about demo and wait for the tile uh, to deploy, but uh, this is what happens when MySQL tile uh, is uploaded onto Ops Manager. The Docker uh, Kibosh broker is then deployed on the Bosch VM along with the Helm chart, and Docker images are pushed into Docker registry. Broker then registered itself into CF Marketplace, and then when create service call comes in, broker talks to Helm Tiller to deploy services onto PKS cluster so that then application can bind to. So what we see here or what we saw here is a services, PKS services could be uh, deployed uh, via Kibosh on demand without writing Bosch or on-demand framework, and just a bunch of YAML, few lines of YAML, almost zero code written by a partner. And if you have developed Bosch release in the past, you know what benefit this gives. So then we ask, what if this is still one broker managing one product, one Kubernetes product, and you still have to download that from PivNet, upload to Ops Manager, wait for apply changes, which takes a couple hours. So we ask, what if, if we can extend Kibosh, and instead of managing one product per tile, we can change it to manage multiple products, multiple Helm charts, provide a user interface, that the customer can then just download services from Pivotal Network or grab it from open source, stable Helm chart repositories, or have internal services uh, inside, inside special services group who curate the services for them. That's the feature that we call Bazaar. We were able to demo to few of our customers the user interface is just a CLI right now, no front-end UI. Uh, and there are still some questions on how who curates the services, how it works on air-gapped environment. But what is exciting is the customer can create marketplace in much faster pace and rapidly. 
and then create a cluster and on-demand services of the services that they can see in the marketplace. And that, this is what bizarre architecture look like. Uh, again, a um, lot of boxes, a lot of arrows. What's important here is uh, child. Instead of creating a child for service product, you could just use bazaar's user interface. In this case, it's just a CLI to populate your marketplace. And that's why we call it bazaar. And then Kiposh can then just is extended or enhanced to talk to this uh, bazaar piece that is also sitting on the same VM as a Kiposh and update the marketplace with each new home chart that gets deployed. And everything else just works as is. So that's what we are going to take a look now. Um, I'm going to play a role of application developer and Joe, who is now going to play a role of a platform operator. So let's take a look. So Joe, I think uh, I want to show my application ah, yes. here. Yep. So I've been developing this application uh, for the purpose of a demo. Uh, it shows acute images of animals. And uh, we can rate animals. Feel free to rate if you want to. And what I'm going to do here is upload one more image. So if you guys are interested in voting, please feel free. You might be wondering why cute images. It's backed by science that if you look at cute images, it does improve the productivity. So that's <laughs> the reason for this image. So uh, Joe, do you want to show where my application is running and how the environment is look like? I sure do. So we have a, a PCF environment set up with Ops Manager. <clears throat> and we have an apps manager running. And here we can see the animals application is running in, in the apps manager in Cloud Foundry. Uh, we also, if we look at our command line, uh, we can look at uh, CF target and see that we have an organ space defined. If we look at the applications from this perspective, there's there's our animals application running in Cloud Foundry. Cool. Um, do you think that your application data will survive if we need to restart the VM or restart the application? Mm, probably not. I just started developing this application, and I don't think I'm saving all the voting in database or images in some persistent store. Let's okay. see. Let's restart your application and see if it's a good 12-factor application. Okay. Uh-oh. Where, where did my cat <laughs> picture go? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's not saving things in persistent store. So do you have some service that I could just use to save all the images, um, something like Amazon S3 or um, yeah. something like that, and MySQL or some sort of database that I can use to save all the voting. I have MySQL and Minio uh, packaged as Helm charts. OK. Can I take a look and can I use it for yes. this application? Yes, you can. OK. Shall I, shall I set it up for you? Yes. OK. <laughs> So in order for this demo to work, we have, we have our Helm charts for MySQL and Minio. We want to deploy those on a PKS cluster. So we have one of those uh, set up. Let's just uh, show that. So kubectl git pods. We have a Kubernetes running. And we have uh, 
helm, or actually Bazaar installed it there, but it's there. I have the helm CLI. So there's a couple of things running here, neither of which are MySQL and Minio. So let's look at the, we also have a Bazaar CLI as part of this project set up. So the Bazaar CLI talks to the Bazaar tile. If we go look at Ops Manager, we had installed a tile called Bazaar uh, prior to this. And that, uh, as Gino showed in the architecture diagram, had created a, a VM running a Bazaar executable. So let's use this Bazaar CLI command to install uh, Minio. So notice that uh, the Bazaar CLI takes a pointer to where the tile is installed, a username and a password, the save command, and then a pointer to the tarred up uh, helm chart. So we, it simply says chart saved. And then we want to make that chart available to the orgs and spaces. So we'll do a CF enable service access. And we'll also go get MySQL. The first one was Minio. So that's the MySQL Helm chart. And then we also need to make it available. So Joe, what happens when these commands are run? Okay, so we've uploaded into uh, Bazaar. And now we can see in our marketplace uh, at the command line here that uh, Minio and MySQL have showed up in the marketplace. Or if we go look in the marketplace in Apps Manager, we can see Minio and MySQL. So we've taken a Helm chart that uh, could have uh, come from internal service provider or from uh, open source uh, internet mm -hmm. or from Pivotal Network mm -hmm. and uh, simply uploaded that Helm chart and it showed up in the Cloud Foundry marketplace. So I don't have to wait for ours to deploy my tile for MySQL to make it available? Correct. You don't need, a, you don't need the tile. Cool. So let's try. Uh, so now we need to create an instance okay. to make it available to your application. Okay. Usually the application developer could do this. Could you do self, that for me, please? I will do that. So create service, MySQL. So now this plan. is creating MySQL service instance on PKS cluster. It is. It's, it's behind the scenes doing a Helm install of MySQL. And the same for Minio. So I can just bind this to my application now? The service instance Shortly. is created? Right now it's, it's actually doing the install. You can see that it's creating progress. Shortly here you'll have, have your service. Cool. And right now can we also go take a look at um, pods that it's creating on PKS cluster? We sure can. Looks like it already created Minio yeah, and so here's the three. The Minio and MySQL. Minio and MySQL cool. pods that are already running. Um, since it's using Helm behind the scenes, we can now see that we have four things deployed via Helm. Earlier we had just had two. And or watch command, are they fully? So MySQL has been fully created. Still waiting a moment on Minio, but let's go ahead and do the bind. I think Minio is still wasn't. Yeah. So by doing the bind now, we're making the environment variables available to our little animals app that has the secrets and services and pointer to the uh, to my MySQL. Let's do the same for Minio. Is Minio up and running? 
and EO is still created. Cool. It might take a few seconds here. I can take questions if anyone has questions. Yes. Um, the question here is Kibosh is a tool uh, that the software vendor can package a product and Bazaar is for special services group inside customer to populate the home chart. Um, the answer to that question is yes and no. So um, the question is Kibosh can definitely help ISPs um, build their product um, and it, that full process is fully automated. Bazaar, we, we looked at Kibosh, and um, it still have to wait for tile. You have to still build a tile. And ISP vendors that we were talking is like, I have home chart and Docker images that I've already working in. Why do I have to build a tile out of it? Why can't you just take this and make it work as is? So that's where the Bazaar adds value. Um, and it could be a value to special services group or to ISVs who don't want to build the tile, but just uh, release their product as Helm charts and Docker images through Pivotal Network. So that takes away even the tile build process. And to platform operator, um, they, they have to install one tile, bizarre tile, just once, and then use a CLI to populate the marketplace. So it's a win-win for both. Um, so, um, I, I hope that answers your question. Okay. Our oh, the services are created. Services I mean, are no. created. So, let's do the other bind. Cool. Now we have to restart our application to pick up those environment variables. takes just a few moments. So our application has, has been written to look for the environment variables, and when it finds them, it uses them. And notice in the upper right corner, uh, MySQL and Minio icons are now showing, indicating that those services are being used for the data store and the file, file storage. Cool. So if I now upload cats, it's going to save. Ooh, damn God. Multiple cats. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I restart, I think uh, my images are going to be persistent. I think uh, so. Saved in Minio, and the voting will also be saved in MySQL. Should we restart and find out? Try. a couple times and the, the kitties are still there. How about that? Nice. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so, what other services would you recommend besides Minio and MySQL that I should be looking at? Yeah. So, we have a couple more services. Um, Prometheus and Grafana 
let's see here. So we have a little demo set up. So we created a, a small uh, application that would generate uh, usage uh, statistics. So uh, the slash route in this HTTP uh, Python application just returns a web page uh, quite quickly, within a second. Then we created a slow endpoint, and 90% of the time it returns within a second, but 10% uh, of the time it could be slower. So that would uh, simulate an application under load. Then we had a flaky endpoint that would return HTTP error codes uh, from time to time. And by using uh, Prometheus uh, client, we were able to have that application produce a, a text page of uh, usage data uh, based on those endpoints. So we loaded up Prometheus and Grafana um, let me make these commands bigger. Uh, by using the bizarre CLI. So it's the same save command to uh, put Prometheus out there into the marketplace and the same save sand for, for Grafana. Then we did a create enable service access and a create instance of those. Uh, the reason that these are a little bit different use case than the others is these don't bind directly to your application such as the other ones do. Um, but they're handy for the developer because they can create their own instance of Prometheus and Grafana and do usage graphs against their application uh, and they don't need to go to uh, operations in order to, to do that. So here is an example of a graph that we created using Prometheus and Grafana that's running off of uh, PKS that came from a Helm chart. Very well. How about that? Cool. So what we were able to see is that services that used to take hours to get into CF marketplace, we were able to deploy that in minutes via Kibosh and Bazaar. And I have this moment, I was like, oh my God, we all get a service, 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 services for everyone. <laughs> so that's essentially a wrap. Um, this is a pretty, uh, awesome drawing by Denise. Um, she's uh, another pivot uh, from London office and she draws those awesome, awesome cartoons uh, to put things in one page. So uh, what I want you to take away uh, from this presentation is use Kibosh. If you have home charts and Docker images, use Kibosh to wrap that product in a tal that you can then release that through Pivotal Network, or even better, don't even build a tile, but use Bazaar, um, and just release home charts and Docker images to Pivotal Network, uh, and then um, everyone is happy. The application developer can continue consuming the services on PKS the same way they are consuming services on PAS, uh, nothing no world doesn't change for them. Platform operator, like Joe, can continue deploying services and doesn't have to think where the services are gonna be deployed on PAS, platform application services, or on Kubernetes. And we, Pivotal, our team is happy because we can rapidly grow marketplace and ecosystem for our customers in much rapidly pace. So, that's the end. I can take questions. Yes. Bazaar Tal is on GitHub. It's 100% open source, um, and that's where you can grab it from. Is your next slide him? has a path to it. Yes, so here, um, here is um, the rep repositories on GitHub. Kibosh also has uh, Bazaar code in it, uh, and Kibosh sample has all the charts that we used for our demo purposes, and it's a great example if you are just learning, uh, starting to see what Bazaar is looking like. And um, you had a question. Uh, 
uh, usage of Cred Hub um, in what context? Uh, So, so Cred Hub, however platform is using Cred Hub, doesn't change with this at all. The credentials are going to continue to be saved in Cred Hub, and CAPI and uh, PCF is going to continue to look for those credentials in Cred Hub. Uh, with Kibosh and Bazaar, that doesn't change any of that. So I think yesterday there was a presentation regarding Cred Hub and Kubernetes. Okay. Uh, and they showed how to how do you put secrets into Cred Hub and then have them uh, be delivered via an init container to the pod where your application is running. Um, this is kind of it hasn't done anything with Cred Hub yet mm -hmm. in terms of that. If you are trying out, we are happy to get feedback, comments, so, and we accept PRs. So if you are looking to work with Kibosh and Bazaar, we are happy to take your PRs. Uh, I want to thank Matt. Uh, he's one of our team members, and Denise and Guido for the content. Um, thank you, guys. So, yeah. Oh, partner days, thank you, good point. So partner days is what I was talking about. Um, it's a three-day event where we work very closely with partners and the next one is coming up in San Francisco. I believe it's the first week of November. So yeah, here is a link if you are interested in attending. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.